G'day everyone, it's SDS Supercoach, providing Supercoach content for you. So you can check me out on Twitter at Stephen DW Smith and also on Instagram at SDS underscore Supercoach underscore YT. Liking and subscribing would be grouse. I'm here to present, not a review, not a preview. Oh, sorry, my, I've got to adjust my face cam. Oh dear, poor start by me. I forgot to adjust my camera. But anyway, I am here to present like a little because now Supercoach is updated with um, all the mid-season draft picks in here. I'm just going to go over each of them and um, what are my thoughts and see if they can make this, you know, if they can be relevant for this season or whatnot. So I'll just go over them and uh, yeah, I've got a few I've got a few tabs up for ones that I need a bit more information on but we'll see. So Brett Turner uh, from Adelaide, I believe he was their first pick and he was picked four, I think. Let's have a look at Brett Turner. So he can play on the wing and half forward. Sounds like a half decent role. You know, we can see with Adelaide at the minute, they're trying to eye up a, you know, solidify that wing position. Now we've seen Saligo being put in there recently, but we wouldn't say solidified. So if Brett Turner could uh, do something, you know, if he could... Uh, Impress Adelaide. I mean, he's 25 years old, so he's a bit more mature than Sligo. Then maybe he could see himself as a relevant option. So, yeah, Brett Turner could be relevant, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, There's certainly a few half-decent options that we can have a look at uh, during the year with this mid-season draft. Wait, is all on there? No, where's... Durden and Hayes, maybe they're determining their price, I presume. I just realised they haven't up to, they haven't added Durden or or um, Hayes, they'll, so they'll be very interesting uh, from Carlton because they they've both played AFL footy before. Um, I'll actually be interested to see because Durden could be somewhat relevant considering the lack of key key defenders at um, Carlton at the minute. And then Will Hayes is. Uh, another play from uh, for Carlton that's put in a good shift there in their VFL side. Like um, I know he was on the dogs list last year, I think. Now he's already right back in it. So they haven't added them yet, but um, we'll wait and see. Josh Carmichael. So we can get rid of the Brett Turner tab. Josh Carmichael, who so is 22 years old, graduated from from country football in the Sunraysian Sunraysia League to the Sandful with West Adelaide. 189 centimetres, 88 kilos, ready, ready, looks ready to make an impact, okay. Powerful midfielder who can play up forward, a natural ball winner and, a, and hard at the footy. Sounds like an interesting option. I don't know if he gets in straight. Amount. Wait, I do actually remember... <laughs> Callum Toomey last night, I believe, saying that there's a chance he could be the bloke who features first out of the mid-season draft. So he could become somewhat relevant. I mean, mid-forward, I mean, if he could get a game, I wouldn't mind adding a, um, a mid-forward to my midfield personally because Hobbs and McComb will eventually go from my side and we could just pick him up for cheap and hopefully get a game for the rest of the year. But yeah, he could be an interesting one. I think he could be somewhat relevant. So keep an eye on these two, I reckon. They're, they're definitely looking interesting and could get a game pretty early. Massimo D'Ambrosio. That is a ripper name. But unfortunately for him, uh, what's not ripper is that I think he's out for the next month uh, due to a shoulder injury. So maybe he gets a game late. Um, but I guess we'll wait and see. I mean, uh, I don't know much about the bloke, but I know he's playing the Richmond BFL side, so I just kind of thought, yeah, Essendon will pick him up because last year they went with Sam Durham at Richmond's VFL side as well. But, yeah, I think hopefully if he's going to be out for a month, I can't see myself adding him. Oh, wait, is that – hang on. Round 12, 13, 14, 15. He could be in – as early as round 16, but I doubt it. Like, you know, he'll have to battle with Hind and, but 
but we'll see. He could become relevant. Uh, just he'll be out for a month. John Menzi is a precious small forward. Um, uh, probably some uh, pro- could be a sneaky option to get a game here and there because, um, I mean, it's fair to say um, uh, the first thing Essen need in their side currently is pressure. And uh, Jai Menzi apparently offers that down forward. And um, got Will Snelling, who's been dealing with a few injuries, tipping Woody's retirement. So Menzi could be a guy that they just give him a crack and see how he goes. Don't think he'll be a great scorer, but um, hey, I guess he's another 102k option. Sebet Kuek from Frio. Probably the first bloke so far that I've read off that we probably ignore because of um, he's looks sounds like he's the replacement for uh, Jai MS for the rest of the season, but he's not ready made AF, at AFL level just yet and might not be for a little bit. So I don't think he's going to be an option at the minute and uh, I don't think he's relevant this season, so you could probably ignore QEC. Uh Zane Williams, a small forward for the Cats, another small forward that they've gone with. Um, look, they've given a couple of small forwards a crack this season, I believe. But it's a bit bit tough to crack into. You know, you've got Stingle. I mean, Mize sh- should be playing in the BFL, but he's not for whatever reason. It's just a bit tough for Geelong rookies because we know Geelong are trying to win right now. And, um, yeah, it's just going to be a bit tough for, for Zane Williams to crack in that side while they're in the premiership window. Uh, Oscar Forkhead. Good name. Um, I just don't know much about this bloke. The seventh pick, yep. Not, uh, 19 years old, 182 centimetre midfielder from the Bendigo Pioneers. He also lined up with the Geelong VFL side this season. Yeah, look, I think, again, I can't see him getting a game ahead of, like, because Gold Coast are actually making a little bit of a charge for finals. And um, I think there's a, there'd be a few blokes ahead of him, like um, Tazitas, who they picked up, who's mature age, ca- uh, Constable as well. So, again, I think Forkhead might be a bloke that we might not have to worry about for this season. Wade Derrickson, I believe he is a key forward, athletic key forward, uh, versatile key forward. Oh, gee. GWS love this bloke. Originally from Darwin. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so Derrickson, key forward. I mean, to be fair, GWS aren't exactly filled with uh, key forward talent or key forward options at the minute. I know they've got uh, Brander and Hogan. Hogan misses the odd game. Himmelberg's gone down back. Uh, for the for the time being, and maybe Derrickson could sneak a game. I wouldn't rule him out fully. Defender forward as well, so it's a bit of a weird DPP swing, but it could certainly work. So he could just be a sneaky option there, defensive forward. That's it's a pretty good DPP to have if you've got it. Max Rams Ramsden, I thought it was Ramsdale. Was, I'm thinking of Arsenal, the Arsenal goalkeeper. Max Ramsden, 102k. Ruck from Hawthorne. Now we know that Hawthorne have had their current issues with their ruck stocks at the minute. Max Lynch keeps on getting, keeps on having weird stuff happen to him. Reeves, I think, is coming back this week, but only just coming back from a dislocated shoulder. Uh, ben McAvoy seems like he's all but done for the season and potentially his career with a with a neck uh, with a break in his neck. Um. So Ramston, I don't think he's fully ready, but if Lynch continues to deal with concussion issues and bee stings and food poisoning and uh, concussion and I know I already said concussion, COVID protocols, and Reeves is struggling a bit with that shoulder, might have to miss a week, then Ramston might be called up. And I mean, he would have played last week if um, against Gold Coast if they had him, but the rookie draft, uh, the mid-season draft was a week later. James Blank, uh, 195 centimetre key defender. I mean, there's a sneaky chance that he could play this week for the Hawks because Frost is out for a week due to suspension. And 
I mean, but Collingwood do have a bit of a small forward, uh, small forward line. <clears throat> so that would be interesting. But fun fact, he is a bloke that has put Hardigan full forward at Box Hill. So, uh, you know, he sent Hardigan down uh, full forward. He's only 21 years old, this kid, a uh, key defender. So that's very impressive to send a bloke like Carl Hardigan, a really good stopper, uh, a decent stopper at AFL level. That's about all he is. Uh, to send him down forward because he's going that well. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Callan Dawson, uh, I should have looked him up, but should have known a bit more about him. But tall defender, North Melbourne were looking out for uh, tall defenders. Um, yeah, he could be a sneaky option throughout the year. I mean, I'm just begging for how many defenders have we got here from this mid-season draft? One, two, three, four. Four is a solid amount. Let's just hope one of these four can get a game because we are desperate for some for some uh, uh, some defender options down back. I mean, we got Patrick Pennell um, this coming week with the Crows, who was actually a mid-season draft pick last season, pick four, just like Brett Turner. So, yeah, let's see if one of those defenders can get a game. Uh, Bryn Tekel. Uh, he's going to be a popular trade-in player because he has got that wonderful ruck forward status. And if you're going to bring in Tim English this week and say you've got Sean Darcy, who's known for getting an injury here and there, might miss a week, you can swing Tickle and English. They'll come nice and handy. And I think he'll be a popular trade-in target this week. I don't know whether he plays this year. I actually don't know much about him. That's all we need to know about him is that he's a ruck forward. And fun fact as well, um, let's actually go straight to, actually, I'll do that at the end. I'll smash through these other blokes. Jacob Bauer, uh, let's have a look about, let's have a look about Bauer. 19 years old, tall forward. I think uh, Callum Toomey compared him to Will Hayward from Sydney. Um Look, to be honest, I don't know if he gets a game, but maybe if Rewalt or Lynch, Lynch has been dealing with some hamstring, I believe it's hamstring issues, and Rewalt's getting on in age a bit. So maybe they give him a game if if uh, too many of those blokes go down. Hugo Hall, Kahan. I believe St Kilda really interested in him, but passed uh, since Sydney took him. He is a 188 centimetre forward. Okay. Uh, look, I don't know much about this bloke. Um, what does it say here? He was overcome injury in recent years to put himself in the front where he drafted. So it sounds like he could be a tad injury prone. Look, I'd be surprised if he got a game this year, uh, considering how, how much depth Sydney have. But maybe one for the future. And finally, Jai Cully, the number one pick in the mid-season draft. Mid-forward, 193 centimetres. Uh, he's a midfielder. You'd think with the way West Coast are currently going that he could be a very good option. But they did, uh, Rhino, Ryan Daniels did say that um, Cully would be playing the waffle this week because he's missed the past three weeks due to, uh, to I think he rolled his ankle. I think He hasn't played in three weeks. I think just to save up his body for the mid season draft. But I think he's coming back this week, but only for the waffle, but he could be playing in future weeks to come. West Coast do have the round 13 by, so so you'll get another opportunity to rest there. He could play round 15, and that's pretty a pretty exciting sight to see if we could have, you know, maybe on our benches cover is uh, Greg Clark and Jai Cully. Like, that'd be pretty cool. So, yeah, that is all. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you is because another reason why we should be very interested in in uh, Bryn Tickle is if we have a look at Port's fixtures for the until round 19. So Port play Thursday night, so it might not be much fun there, but it's the buy round, so it doesn't matter. Also, he's not going to play um, through the buys, but as long as we got enough cover, we should be okay. So they play Saturday, 1.45. Now, I think from round 15 to 19 or whenever they've sorted out the fixtures, here's what I want you guys to see. So they play the last day on 
They played the last game on a Sunday in round 15 against the Suns. Very handy. Round 16, they play the last game of round 16 against Freo. Round 17, they play GWS Saturday night. So that's still pretty decent. So as you can see, round 18, second last game of the round against Melbourne. So Port Adelaide have got some really late games. And then you've got 435 against the Cats. But as you can see in that five-week block, basically four of the five games are really good, good fixtured for Port Adelaide. So that's why Tekel is actually even more important because he could be that loophole after the, after the buy rounds. And that is very handy to have and to have that loop with uh, Tim English. I think that'll be very nice because we do know rucks can be quite injury prone. So if uh, Darcy or Wits or English miss a week, then whatever the situation may be, uh, Tika will come in handy, be the skipper, be whoever, be, uh, you know, just do a lot of things for your side to gain points and move forward and move up the uh, ranks. Look, I'll end the video here, guys. Um, I've actually, I, I've knocked off work pretty early, so I might actually make quite a few. I might make one or two more videos now and uh, schedule them for some time. I might upload this now, though. But yeah, I uh, hope you guys have a have a uh, good day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.